it's not human biology. It's a new this, branch of physics. Right. This field is infinite, yes. self-sustaining. Yes. Like you talk about. Yes. And it could yes. be free for everyone if we tap into it. Yes. And we should have listened to Tessa over 100 years ago. Now the audience will have a firmer understanding why Tessa research has been suppressed. Welcome to another episode of Awaken Now What. I'm your host, JR. And I'm your host, Helen. Awaken Now What is a podcast that illuminates your spiritual awakening and ascension. Today on our episode, we have Tom Palladino, who is a scalar energy researcher and humanitarian. JR and I are super curious to hear what it's all about. Let's welcome Tom to the show. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> Lady and gentlemen, thank you so much. An honor to be here. <laughs> We're so excited to have you here. Tom, before we get into your background and who you are as a person, what is scalar light and what got you introduced to this energy? Scalar light is the light of the universe. When I refer to scalar light, scalar energy, it's the initial energy of the universe. And we have to consider light energy is fundamental. So why is scalar light, scalar energy important? It sets into motion the universe. First, you start with light. Light is a first principle. Therefrom, you see creation, if you will, as the effect. So the cause is always light, energy. The effect is creation. So what is scalar light? The instructions for the universe. Wow. Uh, right, because we all know, I mean, it's, it's a spiritual-based truth that light is information. Yes. Correct? Exactly. Well, scalar light is, is, is a type of energy that the collective, the general, isn't used to hearing. Correct. Although it is known as chi, prana, crest consciousness, right. um, and zero point energy. Yes, yes, you hit the nail on the head. It is the information field of the universe. How important is scalar energy? It, it creates the universe. It's the underlying mechanism. It's the prime mover of all creation. On that note, will you share with us what the laws that govern scalar energy are? Yeah, they're, they're nothing like the laws of electricity and magnetism. There's two energies, electromagnetic energy, which is taught by academia, and scalar energy, which is not taught broadly. Now, to start, scalar energy is non-physical information. Okay. Whereas electromagnetic energy, it really is a physical role. You, you need some type of physical, some type of quanta. With scalar energy, there is no mass. It's massless. And I firmly believe that scalar energy is a divine energy because it's spirit. Mm -hmm. It's non-physical information, which is some people from a religious standpoint might say it's spirit. It's universal spirit. Well, another distinction is scalar energy is an energy that does not experience any degradation, whereas electricity and magnetism, the electromagnetic spectrum experiences degradation, entropy. So scalar energy is a, if you will, an eternal energy. As a waveform, it does not, it does not die off, so to speak, as opposed to electricity and magnetism that, that experiences the inverse square rule where the energy drops off in proportion to distance. So those are two distinctions. That there, there's many others, but we'll, we'll leave it at that. So how do you measure this energy? Are there tools uh, currently that, that do that, or is it some sort of MacGyver situation yeah. where you <laughs> place together instruments to, to measure yeah, this? Yeah. There is no basic unit. That's a great question. You cannot measure scalar energy. It's infinite. If we have an infinite number of stars creating infinite energy, scalar energy, and the energy is omnipresent, how do you measure something that's om omnipresent? So this is the blanket of the universe. There is no basic unit. There, there is no voltage. There's no meter. 
There's no foot. There's no leader. It's infinite. So that's one of the drawbacks moving forward. You have to show the before and after consequences. You cannot measure infinity. Right. <laughs> that's a great point. Yeah. Now let's get into your background. Where did you go to school? How did you first find out about this? And, and what piqued your interest? Well, let's start with my uh, uh, childhood. I was reading about Tesla when I was 11, 12 years of age, and that really piqued my curiosity. So I wanted to follow that up in college. And I actually t attended three or four different universities, all with a thought in mind of entering into private research. So my collegiate career was just a foundation. It prepared the foundation for my study into scalar energy. The overarching consideration was always this divine energy, scalar energy. Now, sad to say in academia today, there's not one class devoted to scalar energy. Right. So after a what I would consider a conventional university training, I said in my 30s, I have to do this alone now. I have to go about this on my own. And it, it is it's well worth it. But it is painstaking. This is laborious because every theory you have to prove out. Every theory has to be valid or you can at least back it up with some type of instrument as I have in the background here. So when you're trying to prove a new science, you, you, you proceed forward inch by inch. There, there is no gigantic step. This is very time consuming. And since there's no standard curriculum for this. Correct. Are you proceeding with your research based on Nikola Tesla's work? Yes. Are you furthering his development? Yes. And the, the developments of another scientist, Galen Hieronymus. Nikola Tesla and Galen Hieronymus are an elite group. That is, they are one of the few scientists who've ever developed scalar energy instruments and demonstrated them. Now, many people talk about this, but very few people of access scalar energy. I can name them on, on both hands. So what's the point? It's that arcane of a subject. Tessa, Hieron, this is a few other, Moray, Grabenikov, just a few. Today, and I, and, and I don't want to slight anybody, I, I don't see anybody on the internet, and that's my only vantage point, that has a functioning scalar energy instrument that's using exclusively scalar energy. That's how narrow of a field of, of researchers we have. This is fascinating stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is. It's, it's a very small group of researchers. Now, right. and, and leading up to that, what do I, what, what's the point? To extrapolate, very few people have ever had the ability to work with scalar energy instruments, to have hands-on experience, and then speak of that and then demonstrate that, at least by way of testimonies. So that I'm not proud of that. I, I want to make this widespread. That's why we're having this podcast. I'm not hiding. So what's the point? This is an arcane subject, not, not to my liking. I want to make this well known. Now, to cut to the chase, why is this hidden? Why is this suppressed? This, ladies and gentlemen, is, is free energy. If, yeah. this, if this scalar energy instrument, if I'm working with this instrument and I can illuminate a light bulb in my hand without or any... free. Yeah. If I can illuminate a light bulb in my hand... Oh, my goodness. There it this, is. This is free there energy. There it is. Free energy. And the government doesn't want that. No. no. <laughs> There's no way to monetize that. It, exactly. And, and and keep in mind, this energy is from the sun and the stars, so it's an unlimited source of energy. Okay. So amazing. that will change the economic playing field. That will change right. the economic landscape. Mm -hmm. This is what Tesla saw over 100 years ago. And Tesla, over 100 years ago, had, was suppressed. He tried to promulgate his theories. He, he had functioning instruments. He demonstrated free energy. Why, don't, why isn't that taught today by academia? Well, it's controlled knowledge. Just like everything else. Yeah. Just like everything else. Like, uh, you know, in the history books, when I went to school, it was Christopher Columbus that discovered America. Yeah. And I believe that truly <laughs> for yeah. about 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. Anyways, I, I have so many questions for you. First, I want you to explain the mechanics of how that light bulb is receiving electricity when you hold it up to that okay. instrument. Okay. Um, and then why hasn't anyone since Tesla, since Tesla yeah. decided to go into this 
energy is filled? A, a few have. I'll name them. Thomas Hieronymus, Galen okay. Hieronymus, Thomas Moray, um, okay. a few other in, inventors, Victor Grabenikoff. There was a man by the name of Antoine Priori who had scalar energy uh, plasma tubes in which he could cure people of cancer. Now, all of those names that I've just rattled off, with the exception of Tessa, very few people have ever heard of. You have to really dig for that information. Why is this not being followed up? I believe there's an act of suppression against it. If you want to do this, you have to devote a great deal of time. I've devoted a great deal of time, my life to this. Does anybody help me? No. Why? There's no paycheck. There's no money. I, I can't I can't hot hand anybody a paycheck on Friday afternoon. There is no paycheck. So as a new science, you need funding or you have to be willing to do this alone without funding. Well, I'm 64 years of age and for my entire life, I've been working without funding. There are no board of directors. It's me. <laughs> I'm the researcher. And I can tell you, nobody hands me a check every Friday afternoon. <laughs> Now, you put all of that together, there's a lot of people who don't want to work at something for free for their entire life. So what keeps you going? Like, the, there's got to be some great passion yeah. or heart or, or clear message that this is yeah. why you're here as this person to do this for us. Yeah. Yeah. God has given me this mandate. You know, again, mm. to underscore, I'm 64 years of age. I don't think I have another 64 years to present this to the world. What's the point? I, I've been carrying the baton. Uh, to let the audience in on this, back in the 90s, I met with the Hieronymus family. I never met the inventor, Galen Hieronymus, but I met his wife and his daughter. And his wife and his daughter taught me scalar energy research out of oh, their man. private laboratory. Now, that's what it takes. You're not going to find this in academia. So you have to go off the beaten path. I was fortunate enough to find the Hieronymus family. They brought me in to their laboratory, they showed me their instruments, they actually sell, sold a few instruments to me, and they opened up their notes to me. And in many ways, the wife, Sarah Hieronymus, at that time, she was in her 80s, she knew that she was passing, so she gave me a great deal of information. She realized that I was serious about this. And by the way, back then in the 90s, I knew a few people who were interested in this, they're all gone, they're deceased. So you could say you are the chosen one, Tom. Yes. To be blunt, <laughs> to be yeah. blunt, I'm the only one left out of that group. Everybody, yeah. and even the, the family is not interested. So it, 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 um, it really is my responsibility now. I, I carry the, I carry the, the banner. Yeah, I carry the torch. Now, you, you said this information, this energy has been suppressed. Have you received any pushback? or warnings from the government about your no, research? No, and, and for various reasons. First and foremost, God protects me. Secondly, what I'm doing, the, the, the government doesn't understand what I'm doing. What, what I'm doing is, is outside of any uh, legislative law. What I'm doing um, does not come within their, their scope of jurisdiction. Okay? Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is a new science that no legislative body has ever defined. So what I'm doing is perfectly legal. And until the, the legislative bodies of the world recognize free energy, then you know this it's not going to be it's not going to be, if you will, legislated upon. It's it's not going to be controlled. Who 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 want who in government wants to say yes, free energy exists and right. we're going to now regulate it. Don't you think, though, that they, they might have some scale of this technology themselves and are using it themselves in their own technologies and are keeping it hidden from the public? Maybe, maybe. I'll, I'll share this. The day that Tessa, Nikola Tessa died, he was uh, in New York at that time, and, and he was uh, in an apartment building. The day that Tessa died, the United States government seized his notes and his inventions. <laughs> the day <laughs> and, he died. That's now, crazy. Yeah. On Wikipedia, it says he was hit by a car. <laughs> Who, well, that's right. That's incorrect, right? I, that's false. I, I, well, not what that I, not, not the probably... story that I've heard. Anyway, long, <laughs> long and short of it, why would the government seize all of his inventions, all of his notes? What's the point? And, and why, if that's true, why hasn't the government shared those inventions and notes with the general public? 
you know, you have to follow the money and, and money tells the story and money dictates the narrative. And Tesla, without equivocation, had free energy instruments. And a free energy instrument changes this, the social order. A free energy uh, paradigm will change the military industrial complex. Yep. Wow. That's where we're going with this. So it's, it's, um, if you will, I'm trying to present again this, this new branch of physics. It is indeed a new and emerging branch of physics. Uh, very few people have ventured as far as I have in, in this realm of scalar research. I wish we would have a, a greater number of researchers who would get involved. But as, as the aforementioned, um, impediments right now i'm the well, I'm one of the few who's continuing on with the research of of hieronymus and tesla but we're going to change that your podcast will help get the information yeah, out there absolutely um, some people will be inspired motivated encouraged to kind of follow in your footsteps and we hope they do we hope they do yeah um I want to see that light bulb again. Helen, do you have any more questions before we get to the light bulb? <laughs> <laughs> it is I'm, super cool. I, I, um, I'm going to demonstrate it again. Yes. And, and again, I'm holding a light bulb in my hand. It's not plugged into anything. Right. So scalar energy. Is that will a animate. special type of light bulb? No. Created? No. Or is it Home Depot? No, it's a okay, Home okay. Depot. I just bought okay. the red one. <laughs> okay. I, I bought it. Okay. It's not a special light bulb. And the point is... <laughs> Either electricity can animate a light bulb or free energy or scalar energy. Okay? Right. So obviously I'm not plugging this into an outlet. That is crazy. Now, if, if I keep that light bulb inside its package. Still. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And you're holding it up to a Tesla coil. Is right. that correct? That's correct. Okay. Or if I take a, a culinary board, a wooden board, and place it by the instrument, Wow. That's so much energy that still just That's passes amazing. through. And so I, I see you you holding it with your bare hands and you're no less than a foot away from it. The safety of it. What how safe is it to be around? Yeah, that, that's a good point. So remember this is not per se electricity. Electricity. So you right. can't you Scary can't get energy. a shock. And and <laughs> keep in mind it's massless. This is not you cannot get an electrical shock. It's right. not electricity. Here's another experiment. This is a a fluorescent tube in its factory packaging. Ooh. Okay. So what's the range? How, how, I mean, you have, you have to hold it right up to it. For yeah, it to turn but on. Relatively close, say within eight inches. Okay. But here's the point. That produces a new, different physics, so to speak. Yeah. That instrument presents a local scalar energy environment. Mm -hmm. It's no longer electricity or, or, or magnetism. Okay, if you bought a, a watt meter close to that instrument, it would not function because it's not wattage. There, there is no electrical current next to that instrument. So now we have, again, the, our, our proof that there's two energy fields. And what I'm working with is, is exclusively a scalar energy force field. So anytime I'm close to that instrument, it's a new branch of physics, the different branch of physics with different laws. And what we can do close to that instrument with that local environment, you cannot achieve with electricity. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm going to further that. When I am working with these instruments, I do not work with people. I work with photographs of people. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to hold my photograph up. My photograph has an energy field. So this is the branch of physics that is massless, non-physical. My photograph, if I print it out on a piece of paper, has energy, scalar energy. Mm -hmm. This instrument accesses my scalar energy signature. I actually place the, inch, the photograph inside the instrument. Now my photograph is experiencing this type of energy. So what does that mean? My force field is being animated. If I can animate a light bulb, then I can animate my brain and my chakras. Right. right. Within the scalar energy force field. It's not an electromagnetic force field. All of my work is through scalar energy with energy fields on photographs. So what's the point? There's two toms. That's right. This is my bilocated version. 
This is the physical Tom. This is the flesh and blood. You're looking at that. This is my energetic Tom, where I bilocate. There's two energy fields, a electromagnetic field and a scalar energy force field. When people send me their photograph, they're in two places at once. Right. I do not treat people in the flesh. There's no in-person sessions. I treat photographs of people, which are the substitution or the representation of a person. Now, this cannot, this is not far-fetched because right now I see Helen and Jay inside my computer. That's your bilocated version. Yep. Okay? Physically, yeah. you're still present in your office, but I yeah. see your bilocated version in the computer. You see me inside your computer. Am I there in the flesh? No. It's my bilocated version on the, the camera, on this video call. So if you can do that by way of StreamYard or Zoom or Skype or just a regular television program, anytime you watch TV, people are right. not inside the television set. It's right. their bilocated version. Well, I do the same thing. I so, place so a person's reads, photograph. Yes. Right. All it reads, all it reads is light signatures, which yes. which uh, yes. decipher or decode certain slices or frequencies of time, which we still exist in, which is happening now. Yes. And when you're working with scalar energy, and, and here's another truism that distinguishes it from electromagnetic energy, in a scalar energy environment, there's only one time, the present moment. Right. There is no past. Mm -hmm. There is no future. Oh, when so somebody buys by the, those laws. Yes, which is not, <laughs> which is not typical, is it? <laughs> For instance, some people this this photograph might be three years old, four years old, but it still reports who I am right now in the present moment. Exactly. There was a great uh, a scalar energy researcher. His name is Victor Grubenikov. Now follow me. He was able to uh, negate gravity and use an anti gravity platform. And when he was on his anti-gravity platform in a scalar energy environment, he realized that his wristwatch never advanced. When he was on his scalar energy instrument, his wristwatch stood still. Time stood still. Wow. Meaning what? While he was on his anti-gravity platform, he was in a, such a strong scalar energy force field, there was only one moment, the present moment. Right. When he would return to Earth, and step off his scalar energy device, he recognized that his wristwatch was three or four hours behind because no it did way. not advance during his anti-gravity travel. <laughs> so he proved time travel. He proved that when right. you're in a scalar energy dimension, you're outside of time and space. Time and space. Fascinating, fascinating, fascinating stuff, Tom. What does that mean for aging? That's a good point. Um, <laughs> And I'll speak for myself. I'm 64 years of age and I have no health complications because I'm constantly mm -hmm. under the influence of scalar energy. I believe scalar mm -hmm. energy has slowed down my aging process. Right. Okay. Wow. If we, if everybody in the world lived in a perfect scalar energy environment, you would not age. Time would stand still. That would be completely in the present moment. Yes. Completely in the present moment. Yeah, no it, past, no no future. Um, you talked about anti-gravity. Have you progressed with your own anti-gravity technology using scalar energy? Uh, I have theories. Actually, I'll, 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 I'll clue you in. God gave me a message in the future that I'll be able to work with anti-gravity, uh, that in the future he'll give me the wisdom. And it's, it's rather simple and straightforward. Scalar energy causes gravity, which is like a, a concentration of uh, scalar energy. When you negate or release that concentration, you start to have anti-gravity. And the more you negate scalar energy, the, the greater the anti-gravity force field. So the cause of gravity is not the relationship of two bodies of mass in the vicinity of one another. That's false. That's false teaching. That's one of the uh, fallacies that's being uh, taught today by academia. The cause of gravity is scalar energy. It has nothing to do with a relationship of two bodies of mass. That's absolute nonsense. So we, ha we have to rewrite the, the science books. We're going to do that. Right. We got to rewrite everything. Yeah, we rewrite we, history you books. You do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and <laughs> All of it. Uh, yeah. And let me be very bold here. Be because many of the people who, who promulgate these theories, who promulgate this, this 
uh, if you will, body of knowledge are doing it to deceive us, to control us. Yeah. Those who are writing the history books want the history books written as per their political objectives, as per their their end game. Okay. There are sadly there's there's there we don't have a free exchange of information. No, no we don't. That's, wow. Thank you, Tom, for being on the show. Um, yeah. <laughs> You explain that the heart and the mind are scalar energy vessels yes. um, and you don't need instruments to access it. So yes. when someone reaches a, a, a residence of heart brain coherence, they're automatically activating scalar energy. So we can right. do it through raw creativity, yes. through music, through yes. dance. Or we're doing this on a daily basis. And yes. We don't even know it. Exactly. What is thought? It's a scalar wave. Right. Now, why do I say that? <laughs> a thought transcends time and space. A thought is non-physical. A thought is not subject. A thought can pass through a wooden board. Okay? We are illuminated by our thoughts, just as scalar energy will illuminate a light bulb. When we say illumination, we, we literally mean illumination from scalar energy instructions. Okay? A thought is not subject to to the time space continuum, which all of that fits into the definition of scalar energy. So what is a thought? It's a scalar wave. Mm -hmm. A brain wave is a scalar wave. I, and I, I'm almost almost embarrassed to say I don't know why academia hasn't picked this up. Where does a thought come from? It has to come from an external source. Where does our heartbeat come from? It has to come from an external source. How do we receive creativity? How do some people compose music? How do some people master a language? What gives us the circadian rhythm? Instructions. Where do those instructions come from? Scalar instructions. Right. Yeah. It, it's so straightforward. I, you know, to this day, I just don't know why we haven't grasped these notions. It's rather apparent. To me, it's self-evident. Right. It's kind of obvious. Once you actually get to the, the nuts and bolts of everything, it's like, huh, makes you scratch your head. Yeah. Could you contrast? electromagnetic energy and scalar energy for the audience? This is an animation. I had a graphic artist create this. That's a scalar wave. It looks like a double helix. Here, helix, here's, an actual, right. here's an actual photograph of a scalar wave. That's a time-lapse cool. photograph of a scalar that wave. That is amazing. There's a major groove and a minor groove. A major groove and a minor groove. And when that energy enters into your chakras or your brain waves, those scalar waves are brain waves. Those scalar waves spin the chakras. Scalar energy is a vortex. Chakras are vortices. So we're having spinning scalar energy, spinning our scalar energy center points, which are the chakras. Now, this is one of the reasons why academia today does not recognize chakras. If you recognize a chakra, you have to recognize the source, which is free energy, and academia does not is told by the powers that be not to recognize free energy so we don't consequently recognize the chakras. That's powerful stuff. Yeah. That's powerful stuff. And what? It, uh, and here's a clue in. What, is, what does that double helix look like? DNA. Yeah. <laughs> you, you folks are experts. DNA. Now, yeah. there's a major groove and a minor groove to scalar energy. It's the Fibonacci sequence. The major uh -huh. groove is 1.618 times the size of the minor groove, which is one. So if that's the minor groove of one, the major groove in length in length is 1.618. So that ratio of 1.618 to one is the Fibonacci sequence. It's the mm. golden proportion, the golden right. mean. Golden ratio. DNA has that same proportion. There's a major groove in DNA that you can measure that if it, you ascribe the value of 1.618, then the minor groove would be one. So the Fibonacci sequence embodied in a scalar wave is a Fibonacci sequence downloaded to our DNA. Okay, so if scalar energy are the instructions of the universe, they are, scalar energy also instructs DNA. What is DNA? It's a standing wave of scalar energy. Wow, yeah. Simply put, this is the answer to, to everything the, to the multiverse. <laughs> yes, this is it. 
because uh -huh. behind because scalar energy is a first principle. You always start with energy, light. It's the instructions of the universe. Before you build a universe, you instruct the universe. So right. the intelligence precedes the building, creation. Scalar intelligence precedes the actual creation of the universe. Right. You said that obelisks and pyramids are passive capacitors. Yes. Of scalar energy. So yeah. our ancestors yes. knew how to harness this energy. Yeah. Yes, in a passive capacity. Many people are building pyramids today, and they realize that when, when they're within that pyramid or close to the pyramid, they have a surge of energy. Well, that's mm -hmm. what people experience with me. They say the chakra balancing gives them a surge of energy. Some people have even said that when you place food inside a pyramid, the food does not decay as fast. Huh. Why? Because you're slowing down time. Because uh. scalar energy is not a chemical process. With scalar energy, you can negate a chemical process. So in part, a strong scalar energy environment negates a chemical process, a chemical decay. Okay. So when I work with my instruments, it's 100% scalar energy. There's no chemical process. It's not a biological process. I'm not working with the physical body. I'm working with an information field. Information fields are non-physical. So you have to consider if you're working in this sense of, of quantum healing, right. it, it's always non-physical. It has nothing to do with the biological body. It's right. not human biology. It's a new this, branch of physics. Right. This field is infinite. It's yes. self-sustaining. Yes. Like you talk about. Yes. And it yes. could be free for everyone if we tap into it. Yes. And we should have listened to Tessa over 100 years ago. Now the audience will have a firmer understanding why Tesla research has been suppressed. Okay? Yeah. If, if you have Tesla instruments that can power a city, and then you, you no longer need essentially fossil fuels and wind farms right. and None nuclear, right? Yeah. Nor do you need the infrastructure. You don't need wires and satellites. You don't need repair trucks. Now, is your house powered through scalar energy not yet but i'm working on that i'm going wow. to say within the next mm. four to five years i should be able to illuminate light bulbs at a distance right i'm, I'm, wow. I'm engineering something right now and then i have to test the engineering so right. it's a and process you're, you're talking about light bulbs and then to computers and then to cars right that sounds great super sustainable <laughs> yeah we, we need we need a new way of doing things the yeah. the model let's just call it the world model the, the world paradigm it's not working you know, i look around i don't think people are happy i see a great deal of scarcity what does yeah. scalar energy do it's free energy there is no scarcity with scalar energy it changes the economies of the world if everything is free or relatively inexpensive then you don't have that supply and demand consideration. And it makes so much sense with um with like the nature of things, like the natural nature of things, right? Because scalar energy is the the particles from the sun, right? Light, as we've mentioned. And so like why wouldn't there be abundance? Like yeah. when nature is abundant. Yeah. T Tessa began his career with electricity. So did my predecessor, Galen Hieronymus. They were both electrical engineers. But during their studies, they realized there was another animating force, which was superior. And both men discovered um, uh, what they call, what we call today, scalar energy, radiant energy. And both men develop instruments to control that energy. Now, if you're really a, a profound theorist or a profound inventor, you're going to be able to understand that scalar energy is real and that you'll be able to invent an instrument or describe its mechanism. So that's the key moving forward. We have to work with people who have an understanding of this physics, okay? Mm -hmm. And I, I believe I'm one of them, and I believe there are other people out there. I, I, I haven't met them personally, but again, it's a very uh, it's a very small field. Our universe is sadly a small universe in, in dealing right. with the infinite u universal energy. Right. I, I got a curious question here. Um, as it regards to light signatures. So all you all it really needs is a light signature. Can you yes. access light signatures from yes. the future? Yeah. Yes, because there is no past, present, or future. Right. Yes. Right. To, to answer you. I know that's a very profound concept, and people might say, what do you mean? But 
Scalar energy is the cause of time. I'll explain. A scalar wave rotates. And when you rotate in one direction, time moves forward. This is the explanation of time. When you rotate scalar energy in one direction, time moves forward. Rotate in the opposite direction, time moves backwards. That's the cause of time. So if you're working with a first principle, there's always an easy explanation. So I'm going to explain time and space. Time is the rotation of a scalar wave. Rotated one way, it moves forward. Rotated the other way, it moves backwards. When, when you have a perfect scalar energy environment, you're not subject to the rotation. You're just filled. You're in a sea of scalar energy. So there's neither forward movement or backward movement, so to speak. You're just experiencing all time because you're in this all time paradigm. But you only can experience this timeless effect if you're in a strong scalar energy force field. This is why Grabenikov, when he was levitating on his platform, that was a very, very strong scalar energy platform that negated electromagnetic energy. Electromagnetic energy is subject to time. Scalar energy is time. So if you're in a perfect scalar energy force field, you possess all time. And again, this energy is universal. So you transcend space because scalar energy is interconnected with all other scalar waves. So you transcend time and space with a scalar wave. This is the God particle. It is, but it's not a particle. <laughs> That's a right. good point. And see, this is one of the fallacies today in, that they're teaching in academia. They're looking for a particle, whether it's a muon or the Higgs boson. Okay, that's fine. But those are really just forms of ether. They, they, once again, they're missing everything. A particle is not fundamental. I don't know why they don't get this. A particle is was created by light. It's not light. Light, scalar light, creates all particles, ether, muons, it creates any derivative of an ether. It creates neutrinos. You, you don't replace light. The Higgs boson particle is not at the top of creation. Light is at the top of creation. It's painful when I see this. It's just painful for me. It's just like, oh, which, this which should be self-evident. To... This should be so apparent. Which leads me to, to my next question. Uh, have you written any comprehensive analysis uh, so that it can be peer reviewed in the future. No. Why? Because I have no peers. Nobody has my experience. Nobody has my instrument. Nobody's been able to du duplicate my results. I'll give you a for instance. Jay, if you're the only person in the world with a computer, nobody in the world has a computer. Can anybody give you a peer review of your computer work? <laughs> no, because they don't have a computer. Right. So once again, this is a my call out to humanity. Get involved in scalar energy research. Travel the path that I've traveled. Do your research, and then you, we can we can swap notes. Right now, if I'm the only person in the world with this protocol, then I cannot be peer reviewed. Yeah. Wow. What a what a shame. You know, to to this day, right? I, right. In this I, day and age, 2024, oh, 2024. I, you know, and I it's crazy I, that we're... I'm trying I'm trying to get the word out, but it's there is an act of suppression. If everything I'm saying is true and accurate. This should be headline news. No. Uh, yeah. No. Right. Another curious question. As it pertains to artificial intelligence, can scalar energies be integrated into any AI technologies? And is that a dangerous thing? Would that be a dangerous thing? Okay. I, I'll, I'm going to start off with this caveat. I don't want to belittle anybody's research. I, I, I want to see research. Number two, scale energy is divine intelligence. That's all you need. Right. You don't need artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is man's intelligence, some type of quantum computing. It's still subject right. to error. It's still subject to some type of interpretation, as opposed right. to divine energy that knows everything. There is no computation. There is no, there is no, if you will, syllogism. There, there is no deduction. You don't, you don't, you don't speak in parables. There, there's no way that we can compare divine intelligence to AI, because divine intelligence knows everything, whereas AI is still a computing system. AI still has to rely up, upon facts. Divine energy knows everything, it, in an instant, it, and it never makes a mistake. 
Yeah, Tom, would you share some examples of the quantum healing? I'm sure that's something our audience would love to hear about. And I've, saw, and I've seen your Facebook with a lot of the testimonials, yep. but how far reaching is this? Okay. You can do anything with scalar energy if you know how to maneuver, manipulate it, control it. Now, remember, we work with information. I'm going to show the audience a photograph of information. That's the Epstein-Barr virus. That's a magnified photograph of Epstein-Barr. Epstein-Barr is rather common. It has an energy field, a signature attached to it. Right. Now I'm going to show my photograph, which likewise has an energy field. Now, keep in mind, my work is not biological. If I take Epstein-Barr and place it in the instrument side by side my photograph, the two energy fields communicate, just as we're communicating through our video call. If I had the signature of Epstein-Barr, scalar energy, this all-powerful, all-knowing energy, there's no deduction now, scalar energy would find the Epstein-Barr virus as a signature and eliminate it. I eliminate, I eradicate, I negate germs, microbes through energy in the energy field, never working with flesh and blood, never working at the biological level, <laughs> always working at the informational level, which is perfect. Right. Okay? Energy, light never makes a mistake at that level. Biology is subject to human interpretation. Biology is subject to biochemical reactions. Right. Remember, scalar energy is not biochemical. It's, it's purely informational. So if I tell my information field to find Epstein-Barr and eradicate it, negate it, that's what happens. All of my sessions are through photographs, which is my bilocated version. I'd much rather work with a photograph that cannot experience a headache, the flu, a pimple, cannot experience any type of nauseous feeling, cannot experience weight gain or weight loss. It's an information field. Wow. After I work with people, I always ask people to send me testimonies. This is one of the testimonies after we work with somebody who had Epstein-Barr. No Bar. viral load. No viral load for Epstein-Barr. Not detected. What in the world? This is the next, this should be the next groundbreaking holistic modality. This should be talked about in every healer circle. If, if the world accepts the fact that scalar energy is a different force field than the biological force field. That mm -hmm. scalar energy is a new branch of science, and it's not just our electromagnetic being. We can actually bilocate in the scalar energy force field. Right. But there's a lot of ifs there. There's a lot of hurdles to overcome. I have a lot of work ahead of me. I've got to teach and teach and teach. It's, it's, <laughs> right. You've got, you've, got, you've got to continue to educate yeah. more of these people so that – you know, it can, continues to be widespread. Yes, and it will. It will. And, and thank you for your audience. Thank you for your audience. I will tell the, the, your audience, um, go to my website. We have thousands of testimonies, just absolutely thousands of testimonies in which people tell me they feel better. Now, keep in mind, my work is not medical science. You cannot explain why a person no longer has a viral load by way of biological science. This is not human biology. This is a force field. So will we ever explain this? Only through the lens of scalar energy, not through right. Newtonian physics. Right. Mm. What, how, how far was your research during the pandemic? I had great wondering... success. I'll, I'll speak about family and friends. My right. family and friends, we were healthy. Nobody went to the hospital. During the pandemic, I... Uh, if I probably uh, caught COVID, but working through my photograph, I can always identify the signal of anything, including COVID-19. Uh -huh. So I'll speak, you know, I'll speak anecdotally by way of anecdotal evidence. Everybody in my family was, was healthy. Imagine, imagine everyone knew about this scalar energy at the, at the peak of the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, I, My goodness. I, yeah, it, it's coming. It's coming. I, I, I don't, I don't begrudge anybody. Um, what I do begrudge is that this has been suppressed. And once right. the people are educated, they'll, they will yearn for this. I trust the people. By the way, yeah. I, I, I relish right. the fact that I have a grassroots movement. That's what it's all about to me. On expanding the your expanding reality podcast, uh, you mentioned that scalar energy or the scalar light can bridge the gap. 
between the spiritual world yes. and the physical world? Can yes. you expand? Yes. Uh, for instance, I believe there are angels and I believe angels are non-physical. Right. Now, just as that, that light bulb can illuminate, I'm going to demonstrate this once again, just as a light bulb can be illuminated through a wooden board because the energy, scan energy can pass through anything. Now, we've heard that angels can pass through a wall why yeah. because they're made out of scalar energy <laughs> if this is <laughs> if this is a wall okay and this is an right. angel it can, the energy is passing through a solid mass right. okay right. so what's the point this is the spirit realm i can't accentuate that enough I, i've said this so many times scalar energy is non-physical non-physical which is the spirit realm Mm -hmm. That's what I've tapped into, the spirit. Right. And everything exists on one plane simultaneously. Yes, yes. which is the spirit plane, because there is no point A and point B. When you're in the right. spirit world, you transcend time and space. Right. Now, if, if by my demonstration, scalar energy can pass through a wooden board, then you've heard that angels, which are made out of scalar energy, can pass through a wall. That's the spirit world. <clears throat> For instance... Hopefully this isn't too far of a jump. There was an experiment, the Philadelphia experiment. Have you ever heard of that? No. The Philadelphia experiment, people think that Tesla was involved. Anyway, there were there was a, an experiment conducted in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on a ship. It's called the Eldreds. It was a U.S. battleship. And during the experiment, the, the sailors were subjected to a high-intensity scalar energy to the point that the ship became a scalar energy force field and purportedly the sailors could walk through the ship. That the ship and the sailors became non-physical and that the sailors could actually pass through the hull of the ship and walk through the walls of the ship. Wow. Okay, why? Because they, it was a non-physical scalar energy environment. The, the sailors, so to speak, became non-physical. They became angelic-like. And that, that was only for a brief period of time, but it proved that that a physical mass loses its physical rigidity and that you become spirit-like. And according to these sailors, they, they could pass through the hull of the ship unimpeded. Well, how long ago was this? Then? Uh, this is, if, if I'm not mistaken, the Philadelphia experiment was back in the 40s. And, 40s. Yeah. But right. That, Pre World War II. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That, too, has been... Um, uh, suppressed. Why? Because if, right. if this ever got out that that soldiers, sailors, I should say, could pass through the hull of a ship. The it's insanity. Back, it's, that, yeah, it was, yeah, it was back in 43. And I, I think the, the government wanted to make their their uh, naval vessels in, invisible. Well, they succeeded. But this, the, this, the experiment was a failure because some of those sailors died after the experiment. They experienced adverse side effects. So I'm going to encourage people. This this movement is going forward today in my laboratory. This is an example. I work with half a million photographs. Wow. All I have to do is print out a photograph and place it on a collage. This is just an example. So if one person can work with half a million people a day, eventually my goal is to work with a billion photographs a year. So this is tenable. It, it's real. So we're already working with half a million photographs a day. That's amazing. That's so amazing. what does this mean to the world? It's a new paradigm. It's a new way of living. So help me achieve that goal, people, those of you in the audience. Tell people about what we're doing. I want to work with half a billion or at least a billion, hopefully a billion photographs a year. And then we're going to go on to anti-gravity and right. we're going to go on to illuminating cities and We'll be able to use these devices to, to, to locate missing people through their photograph. It, you know, the list goes on and on. There's so many applications. That's amazing. Tom, I just want to thank you. Um, during my awakening, when I was awakening to the system of domination and control and suppression, it was hard to imagine a society that actually cared, provided free resources for its citizens just because and so in our conversation today has helped me personally spark that visualization that image of a society with free resources with free energy 
which can then ca uh, cascade and snowball into uh, other free energies and free resources. So thank you. And please, please, please continue to keep doing what you do. Thank you. I, I want to shout out to the audience. Go to the website. We offer anybody in the world 15 days of free session. Just upload your photograph, scalarlight.com. You can include your family and friends. Include your pets. I have two dogs. I treat my dogs. And then you can experience the scalar sessions just by emailing your photograph. That's how I get this out there, by, by people getting involved. And again, 15 days free. Please, I encourage all the listeners to take advantage of this. This is amazing. See for yourself. This is a see for yourself kind of moment. And, uh, you know, test it out and get back to us. Such enriching conversation. And we've reached the now what part of our episode. So, Tom, one last platform for you in the episode. Now that you've shared all this wisdom and blown our minds and paradigm shifted, what now can our audience do with everything we are enlightened with? Just tell people about this new science. Get people involved. And you know, remember, this is a grassroots movement. I hope people will see the merit here. I, I want to share that with the audience. If I can illuminate, once again, a light bulb with free energy, imagine <laughs> the cost for energy worldwide every year is about $10 trillion. <laughs> well, what if we can slash that $10 trillion cost to a fraction with free energy? Okay, that's what I'm working for, free energy for the world. Everybody will benefit, not, not just the elite. Everybody will benefit. So join us. You are what they call a pioneer, Tom. Thank you so much for joining the show. It's been such a pleasure. pleasure. If you like this episode, please subscribe. I'm your host, JR. And I'm your host, Helen. Until next time, y'all. See you guys.